I think that to me the like the fear that you have is like almost like the biggest hope that I have like my my favorite like analogy of that is me me and my homie uh like go around in elite dangerous and like fly places and now when I like look up at the stars like I have a completely different understanding of magnitude and I can go like I can go there, but that is so many light years away. Or like when I see Orion's belt and I think that it's like a flat surface, like I know now that it has depth. Like we're going to be able to see more about the reality that we live in. And the reality that we live in is always going to be better. And if it isn't, then whatever the matrix and like blah, blah, blah. But like there are, there's so much computation that is happening in this world right now. Like when I feel that like very slight wind, when I like, there's so many like beautiful inputs and the only thing that I think that VR is going to do is a provide us things that we don't have in this world, which can be like very addictive. And like, I think that like addiction to VR is like, the same problem as addiction to television. Like we're going to have that problem. But I also think that it's going to let us be able to see like, like we're going to be able to sit in this room and actually watch like as like the air currents come down and watch like as like the milk and coffee of like all of like the temperature mixes and moves. I think that it's going to like help us like be more present in this world. And I think it's going to deepen our understanding both of the virtual reality, if we're gonna make that arbitrary distinction, but also of this one. And I, and I think that like, like, we're talking a lot about fears, but part of the question was how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? How do we mitigate that? I don't think it's about mitigation. I think that people will make what they make. And part of what makes web VR so powerful is that we aren't limiting people. Like what is powerful about the internet is, I mean, there is certain limitations, but in general, like they're very, few limitations. What I think that the best thing we can do is, is make the most beautiful experiences as possible. If like this entire like primordial situation that we're in with VR, where we've got this like super, like super saturated fluid. And there's like these certain experiences that crystallize out of that. If the web is going to be one of those, like we need to make sure the seed of that crystal and the seeds of that crystal that we create are like really like beautiful, positive, like hopeful, and like powerful experiences that move us towards a good direction because we get to give the initial push to this entire movement. So like we need to be making sure that the things that we create are not addictive, but like transformative and reflective and like help us to become better people rather than prove that like, you know, Angry Bird works in VR. You almost got to, we're gonna make the world better. I guess I was so disappointed. <laughs> We're gonna make the world better. <laughs> we got it! Silly <laughs> we're gonna just, I think we're gonna, gonna fail. But it's gonna disrupt try. drugs. It's gonna compete for the same job to be done as like transcendental experiences did yeah. and, and drugs yeah. did. I mean, like a lot of sci fi novels in this. I read one called Shovel Ready recently, where it's a dystopian future. New York is a wasteland, but in some sort of futuristic Trump Tower, rich people lie in beds and are cleaned up by nurses occasionally because they live inside a virtual reality metaverse that's hyper-realistic and is actually run by some religious guru. So it's like this, they've taken, they've disrupted with software, and I do mean disruption in a precise sense, um, everything that major religious institutions do and everything that drugs do. You don't need drugs anymore, except for very nice simulation with really great haptics. That I can I see coming to pass. <laughs> well, the, the I, I also, yeah, don't knock drugs, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have people like, like it's, it's an and, it's not either or. Like, oh, I want to get drunk and do my video game, right? Video games don't replace drinking. Right. You do both. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you're not like, I'm going to read a book and, well, all right, sometimes I might interfere, but, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I think, uh, one, I feel pretty strongly like uh, you know, VR as we, as we know it and we're working towards it today is a stepping stone towards a more general purpose like AR solution, yeah. which is the more difficult technical problem. And that is going to be far more valuable to most people. Like VR is, as we know today, definitely an escape. And you, you, you have to block yourself off from the rest of the world. And sometimes that's what you want. When I go to the theater to see a movie, I want, as much as possible, the rest of the world just to go away. And I want to focus on what's on that screen for the next two or three hours. And I don't think anybody will really argue that that's unhealthy. Uh, and, and I think, you know, people can overdo it. You know, I, I, there was something on the news the other day, somebody broke his thumb playing Candy Crush. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you, people overdo things all the time in every medium 
forever throughout all of human history. But there's a lot of good to be said for having that escape, for being able to just block off the world and go see the Avengers or something like that. And, you know, when we have the Avengers VR, you know, that'll be that much more awesome. And yes, of course, I'm going to want to go and spend a few hours in there. But then I'm going to want to come back and give my son and my wife a hug mm -hmm. um, because there are human connections that, you know, aren't going to exist in that world. But at the same time, if we've push the technology forward to a point where I can have this constant, like, you know, uh, visual augmentation of, of what's going on, you know, something simple like, I would love to have a little name tag floating over every single one of you, because you're all wonderful people, and I know some of your names, but not nearly as much. I, I don't know half of you, half as well as I'd like, what's the quote? Um, you know, that, that would be extremely valuable, and you're probably going to end up with a sliding scale where, you know, based on the experience I want, I can go all the way virtual or I can go yeah. all the way natural or I can probably end up somewhere in the middle most of the time and have just little bits and pieces where I get to see your name so I don't have to sit there and go, uh, 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 and I can see, you know, the stock price for the day so that I can sell when I want and, you know, maybe have a calculator sitting in the, the corner or something like that. And... I think that that's a much more natural, reasonable place for things to go based on human behavior that we have observed thus far. Yes, it's going to be powerful. Yes, there are going to be people who take it thus far because, yes, there have been people who have done that for every medium that's come along. But um, you know, I, I don't think that we're that hell-bent on our own destruction. I just... How... I mean, the, the augmented reality vision, I actually agree. I think it's going to be... You know, four times bigger than the VR experience by 2080 or whatever, and I'm not on this. I saw that somewhere, and I thought, oh yeah, that totally makes sense to me. So where's the web in that? So to bring back to this conversation, and, and, and I don't have any ideas, so that's why I'm asking. Where, yeah. How does the web relate to... I like that, because right now, the web, it's kind of this weird mix between an escape, but it's also about reality. When you're on the web, you're connecting to social media, to other real people, or looking at news, and... It's this weird version of reality, but it is real. It's not an escape. It might be an escape from your personal reality, but it's not an escape from reality and from the world um, the, the same way that movies and regular AAA video games are an escape, but right. regular web is not. The web doesn't feel, to me, I'm not a gamer, so um, this is, it's kind of strange being in the VR space to say to really not do video games at all. Um, but I also think that the web isn't really about games for for most of humanity. Yeah. This, the web is about that Shopping. those connections, uh, whether it's connections to more commercial stuff or connections to people, or it, it, right? It's it's a, it's expanding things. So so how does that does that tie into the the, the AR space? Suddenly so realizing more? that VR shopping is just is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, also, okay, so you're you were talking about like things that you allow yourself to see in your AR headset, but like what what about what I can make you see about me like with AR headset? And like that's what I want on online shopping, like a whole giant Etsy where it's just like people selling you digital hats. That I can make you see me wear. Like that kind of stuff. That's I think actually like, really going to be a huge That's problem. an that's angle that I haven't cool. thought of from uh, before. And that's. It, it's interesting to think about ways that you can, uh, in that environment where everybody has like metadata that's attached to yourself, uh, what can you, what kind of message about yourself can you broadcast to the rest of the world without needing to open your mouth? So we've, we've gone into a lot of talk about. Um, how scary, you know, the internet at, in general can be sometimes. And uh, I think you pointed out that, um, you know, being in a room with somebody, being able to make that more personal connection with somebody can be a great mitigating factor. Uh, if you can, you know, have your own personal little bubble of information that, that's under your control, where, you know... And my you CSS, can, like, controlling how Yeah, yeah! Oh, my I, God. I, 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 I,
emanating from you. You just oh, like yeah. give, give yourself a crown of like jewels and like have like a dragon on your shoulder. Like you get oh. it. Oh my god. But so, that's enough. That that requires the web because it requires interne- interconnectedness. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, in a different way exactly. than so you have to than know what I'm coming. Me, yeah, you. everything that I'm doing is inside of my own little space. And yes. instead, it's so that's. that's well, this well I think that with AR, like like AR kind of creates a way for you to have like as many different. Like if we're gonna think about like obviously quads is not the right thing for you, but if we think about like a a piece of content, like AR allows for us to have multiple content. So like in my world, I could put. Like my shopping thing up there, like it might not be, and it, and it might even be that like when you walk into a physical space, like it says like, hey, you're in whatever location now. Do you want to see here's, the prices? Here's where the things. restrooms are. Yeah. Here's, here's where the emergency exits are. Maybe, maybe, right? But you can also like, like, like maybe I can go into like Peter's metadata. He's got his avatar. He's got his big logo over his head, and I can go into that and actually like start like going to like his favorite websites, and then every once in a while like shut everybody off and be like, oh, dude, I really like these puppies too, Peter. And then like, <laughs> I can like add that to my avatar. But I think that like what's really cool about AR space versus VR space is that like it kind of in, in, the, in, the, in the way that like this room is not just a single space, like the entire room is a single space, but like this area over here is a space, this area over here is a space. Like the more that we're, we're more equipped of like understanding like physical and, and mixing physical and digital spaces, like like I could be shopping right here and hanging out with you guys and like whenever I get bored, go back to buying new hats. But like just being able to like, like, uh, like people are doing that on their phones already. Yeah, exactly. They do that on their phones in the Starbucks line and conversations like this. But you'll be able to like have like 10 different shoppings at the same, like you're worried about like multitasking, you're going to be having like a hundred different things going on at the same time. I think it's an interesting like level of etiquette here, just like with when I was growing up, I was told not to read a book on the table by my mother. But also, like, my phone is stashed away somewhere in my backpack, like, it's about, I think there's etiquette, especially around presence, and I think a new form of etiquette will evolve around VR, and, you know, a new appreciation for going outside to be outdoors and going on a hike will emerge somehow, I don't know, it'll have to. Right, if, if, your, if your digital hat is too offensive, everybody's going to turn it off, and it's not going to be any good anyway, so you'll yeah. develop a way to make sure that your digital hat makes, makes sense. It sounds, it sounds like... So what we're doing, one of the things that I think would be exciting, and we're doing right now, we're building a single idea together around how we would share how we want to be seen in AR. Well, not only does that sound like a company, we should turn off the video and I'll go join the company to go do this thing, but it also... I already have to go, I'm sorry. <laughs> but also, it's, it's, we're building a shared mental model yep. of how the world could be. And the more that we could use AR and the web to do that, I'm going to say that how sweet. I think one of the things that we look at on our team, one of the reasons my team exists, is that um, we looked at what happened on mobile and we saw that all the things you wanted to do on mobile, the web couldn't do, native could do. Whether it was like 60 FPS um, sub 100 millisecond response time for user inter- interactions. Or, or it was accessing these wonderful new device capabilities. The web just couldn't do these things. So the web came, became kind of like a, it kind of serves as like a, a backwards compatibility tool if you look at a mobile browser, uh, or it serves as the plumbing behind a native application or a native service. We want a better outcome in virtual reality. And I think the way we get that to that point is to really early on hone in on what are the killer use cases of, of virtual reality as a medium, and then to make sure the web is really robust at doing those things. So one thing you could see is that if we determine that the web, that virtual reality is just great for social because you've got you got eye contact, you've got personal space, um, you've got like voice chat, then we would say, okay, well, how can we get that in the browser? How can we actually get that in the web platform as soon as possible? What's the path to actually doing that? One thing we were talking about the other day was I can define my homepage with a URL. Now I can define my avatar as a URL. Perhaps I can define my avatar on a per site basis. Perhaps the developer of that site can query me to see and parse whatever my avatar actually is. That's a permission I grant to it. And perhaps private browsing, uh, perhaps private browsing is just like an invisibility mode where you actually can't see me. But we've established the conventions that are required for um, uh, for the, the kind of the site, the developer and the user to uh, to have a social experience. I think like the key thing is to figure out where these key what these key elements are going to be and actually get them into the web as soon as possible at high performance and not wait six years from now to actually start doing that. Yeah. I, I also think they'll like sweet. that. Go for it. No, I'm just saying sweet. Sounds like you're you know, already thinking about some of the plumbing 
that they were just describing out on some level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the great thing is we're building on top of, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, we can tap into the way the mobile safari team, for example, tackled some of the same problems or, or how the problems been tap, have, have been tackled since then to do these things. Um, yeah. yeah, in our case, we're also, we built an operating system, so we had a lot of ideas there that we're actually able to port over to WebVR, um, which is doing this. Uh, yeah, talking about the like, Safari mobile things, do you think it's gonna, there's going to be like a skeuomorphism stage of VR? Yeah, it's going to be. Where people try to recreate yeah. an analog. Yeah. What, what's the classic example? Like, TV cameras are invented, and what do we point them at? Radio news broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually legitimate. We still have that. Uh, they still have that. We still point them and we call them like Tom Brokaw on evening news, you know. Um, but I think we have to go through an entire phase of figuring out. You can still have the microphone on the desk on late night. Like, it's just. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, that's yeah. What that, where that microphone came from. It's this cumorphism from radio. And it's like, you kept it this long, really? Mark my words. Somebody will build a version of Amazon or something like it that is just this infinitely long corridor yeah. of products that you have to actually walk down. Oh, you have oh, yeah. it's, it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're so gonna do it to our reality so <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come back to you, Come back to us. <laughs> I'll be back in five days. I'm yeah. gonna be hundred miles down. In the old time, you used to go to this website, click on things, and now, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Are dead. Uh, we have no more video recording, so I just wanted to close this thing out and then we can return to normal human life where I'm not recording everything all the time. So thanks cool. for guys for coming in. That was good. Thank, Thank you. you. Ooh, that was it. Yeah.